Do you ever feel like there's something missing in your life? And no matter how or where you look, you just can't find it. I like to feel like I'm in a sanctuary where I'm free to do my best thinking. But sometimes I just want to make noise. I think we can do something about that. We asked, but we knew it was an impossible question, so here it is. This is the 2017 Lincoln Continental. I haven't seen very many of these. Ford made about 40,000 of these between the five years of production from 2017 to 2021. This is the first year, 2017. The Lincoln Continental name brand is one of the oldest name brands, the first year being like 1940. Then Ford stopped production of these in 2002 was the last, the front wheel drive one. And then they came back in 2015 at the North America Auto Show, which looked really slick. They had like chrome all the way around and these cool wheels and it had those cool LED headlights, which this one didn't come with. So we bought this car from Copart, sight and scene, and as you can see, it has seen better days, but this is exactly what we were looking for. We knew we were gonna have to tear off the entire front end to fit a V10 in this thing. This car, it runs, it drives, uh, it's registered, so we can drive it in the street. It's got a clean title. And it's got a clean title. So why did we choose this car? Well. We honestly like the way this car looks. It has a very good presence. And if you really look at it from the side, the body proportions just scream hot sedan. You want it to be a rear wheel drive car. Unfortunately, Ford built it on the CD4 platform. So it shares a platform with the Ford Fusion and it's front wheel drive. It did come in all wheel drive configurations, but this one isn't it. So our vision for this build was to build a luxury Grand Tour. And this car is going to fit the bill just perfectly. Additionally, in 2003, Ford unveiled a concept car. It was called the Ford 427. It was a luxury sedan and it had a dual overhead V10. It never made it to production, the car or the engine. So we wanted to pay homage to that concept car and we chose the Continental and our obviously our dual overhead cam V10 to reproduce that car and get it out on the road. All right, so let's talk a little bit of a background of how we got the car. So this car, we actually bid on it a total of three times. The first two times we lost on the bid, the third time it came up on Copart again. We were at SEMA last year. It was the last day of SEMA and we knew we wanted this car. It was exactly what we were looking for, a front end collision, you know, stuff that you can just replace very easily. The rear was almost perfect. You can see the doors, everything untouched. So we really wanted to get this car. So we bid on it on the last day at SEMA last year. We were the highest bidder, but we didn't reach the reserve value. So we needed the seller's approval. We threw a couple extra hundred dollars to it and 3,300 bucks and a week later, we had this thing in our driveway. Uh, it didn't look exactly like it does now. It didn't run and drive and it was missing the headlights and a bunch of other stuff. So let's cut to the footage of the day we got it and we walked through it.
I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we just got it. It's obviously not starting. Uh, I think just the, the key is. Yeah, the battery we think is out, so it's not recognizing there's a key in here. But, we uh, thought it didn't have any of the front stuff, but in the back seat. Looks like there's stuff here in the back. So we're trying to bumper, get. Bumper, which we. I mean, it's destroyed, but. but we have the fog lights, which is good. It's still so expensive. Everything for this car is really expensive, so. Anything we can get will help. And then we can't open the trunk because we want to see. Yeah, there's stuff in the trunk, is so there? we gotta. Yeah, I mean, look at all that. Yeah, she goes. Hello. Hello. Some empty envelopes. Oh, we got a phone charger. Score. HDMI cable. Here's the other headlight. <sighs> oh my god, these things are heavy. Yeah. That's the lens. Oh, it's super clean, dude. Has only 24,000 miles. Let's go. Some underbody trays. There's the bumper. So the car was in a front collision, obviously. Must have been some kind of pole or something. Oh, the engine covers here. Nice. We're going to put that on the V10? Yeah. Ooh, dibs. I wonder if we have the spare tire. Yep. Brand new too. It's, it's a full sized spare. It's nice. What is this? A little funnel? Oh. What the hell? What is this for? Give you a little funnel soon? I guess so. I don't know for what though. For oil? Oh, yeah. Dude, this is a link. You don't even know this luxury. Okay, is it an actual Michigan car? How do you tell? I don't, it doesn't say on there like what dealership sold it. Yeah, the whole point of getting this car was that it was a Michigan car. We actually got it from Southgate. Texas. Though. Southgate, Michigan. Oh, there it is. So it's real. We thought this car was too good to be true. Because uh, believe it or not, this is a clean title car. Although we don't have the title yet. We're, uh, we're waiting for it. All right, so 10 months later, and the car still looks almost exactly how we did when we got it. We really haven't touched the car at all other than getting it running and driving. Copar said it was running and driving. Uh, turns out it wasn't. It wasn't the key battery that was off. It was just the wrong key. It didn't even recognize the car. So we had to take this to a locksmith get the key reprogrammed and it started right up. We didn't record the first startup because he kind of started it without us realizing it, but whatever, it's just a stock 3.7, so no one really cares. Uh, but yeah, so all we've done to get it to this point is mount the headlights. We mounted a radiator. We had to loop around some of the transmission cooling lines. Everything else is really exactly how it was. So uh, the air box is still sitting in the trunk. This side's the better looking side of the car. The fender's good. We don't have any missing badges. Everything, you know, the, the rocker panel is mounted correctly. The pumper's on, right? So this side is the best side of the car. Uh, everything works, the trunk, everything. So this is a first for us. Classy, if it works. That's oh, you, I know. So the trunk still works. The sensor for the foot thing. This is I think bump the bumper because it might be tweaked. Oh fuck, not that hard. Boom, it works. Uh, here's all the stuff. We've already taken some of the interior trim off, but we have all the underbody, underbody shield. shields, the uh, overflow. Here's the intake for the air box. It's broken. So this is all the stuff we found in the trunk when we got the car. But yeah, I mean, everything works. Electrically, really, the car is in good condition. The tires lose air every week or so, but it's not a big deal because we're obviously not going to be reusing these. What? So. These sick ass Johnnies? <laughs> yeah, if anyone's looking Bumper. for uh, Lincoln Continental wheels, let us know. We'll give you a good deal on them. Tires come 
bumpers come came off and yeah we're hoping right. this is just easy to fix it looks like everything's here they just the tabs came off so we'll be fixing that when we get time but here's the fancy lincoln handles everything in here works let me show you our starts all the warning lights on the on the dash are on i don't know if you can see it with the camera but every single warning light uh is turning on all the sensors everything is going off but i think we have a pretty good idea of why we've already started taking some of this stuff off so these panels are off because we were trying to troubleshoot the starting issue we thought maybe it was the key receiver there's one in here you can put your key in there if it's not starting but uh yeah it turns out it was just uh, the key like we said earlier so but yeah everything actually looks really good we're hoping we can reuse most of this this panel itself we can replace to clean this up uh, the idea is to make this look like a continental inside even with the v10 and the mt82 so that's going to be a uh, a task but you know we're up to the challenge another thing this car has soft close mm -hmm. classy this side like i said is missing a badge the fender's all messed up but we already have a replacement bumper or fender so and we got a tow hook yes tow hook here so these are the transmission cooling lines uh we run into a little bit of an issue with these uh, we wasted probably a hundred dollars of oil we had this we had these hoses on here without clamps and we went out for a drive and the whole street got flooded with transmission fluid it was i think you could still see the streaks yeah it was really bad there was a large explosion the rig caught fire 20 million gallons of crude oil spilled into the sea and then the rig sank i mean everything happened we lost like i don't know 10 gallons of transmission no. that was a very expensive night but 10 quarts oh yeah 10 quarts <laughs> now there's good clamps here we haven't had any transmission issues but this is it. coming out pretty soon like we got to take this radiator and put it onto the stand for the starting yep this, of the engine. this is the radiator that's going to go on the stand but yeah um, the plan is to obviously get all this out of here clean up get as much space as we can so we can start test fitting the engine transmission all that so like diego said this nameplate the continental nameplate has a very long history and a lot of heritage and we feel this car didn't get the recognition it deserved and ford axed it in 2021 when they got rid of all the cars but look at these humps man this reminds me of like the s550 the mustangs and speaking of mustangs let's take a look at the parts we got so to get this all to work in here, what we're going to be using is an S550, a 2015 373 rear in. And then we actually splurged, we're lucky, and got a GT500 front end with those big ass cast iron brakes, these monsters. So all of this is going to go into there. And we have a hunch that a lot of this should bolt up pretty well because this went down the same line as the Mustangs in Flat Rock. So we're gonna be modifying this thing, getting these guys to bolt in there. Um, and the mod motor should basically drop in. Just, just drop just it, drop it. Just it's just bolt a bolt on. on. Straight bolt on. One thing that's nice about this car that I'm not used to, being so new, we could get all the parts from Ford. And actually we were able to get hood and fenders relatively cheap straight from the dealer. So we got those, uh, we got the bumpers, the grill. We also got the LED headlights that came on the black label and resembled very close to that concept car when they unveiled the Continental. So these look pretty sick. These um, are all going to get paint matched. Yeah, we're all going to, I think we're going to keep it the original blue. Maybe, Maybe, most likely. Yeah, most likely. So without any more talking, let's put this thing on the lift. We haven't lifted this up since we bought it. Take a look underneath and we're going to drop that rear end and do the rear wheel drive conversion bolt-on kit. than I was expecting. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. So this car came, well, we won the auction in Texas. So the car was in Texas is where we had it picked up, but the title was a Michigan title. Yeah, this car is a Michigan car originally. Has a clean Michigan title. Oh, you could see where, so I think they forked, right? Look at all this. Oh yeah. 
Right, there's dirt. Oh, you can see here too. Yeah, there's, so they must, uh, you know, at Copart, you know, they move all these cars with forklift. Forklift. So I think that's what hit. You can see, like, this is all scratched. You see the marks here, right? Yeah. Is where it was kind of. Well, yeah, this, there's a little bit of rust, and honestly, for a 2017 car, it's more than I expected. Yeah, it's a little. But it's nothing bad. So you can see like where the pole hit down here. Yeah. Doesn't really, I mean. Everything looks, still looks pretty good. Not a lot of room in here for a manual MT82 transmission. MT82 and <laughs> two three inch exhaust. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. It's like plastic in oh, here. What the f Oh, this is uh, like, uh, so it floats. Oh, when it goes it's in like the hurricane resistant? Correct, That yeah, McLaren yeah. had no chance. If this thing was in a, Flood, dude. Float. What the hell is what this? What is this? Well, Here's the trunk antenna. Oh. Well, all this is going to come off for weight reduction. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. So you guys That's know. Priority number priority. one, weight reduction. So the first task is going to be all of this. <laughs> it's going to come off. It's just a bolt-on. just a bolt-on. According to my calculations. It should just be a bolt-on, except for the front two mounts. So we're going to test that theory today. All right, let's set the tripod up and let's get to drop work. this some out. This uh, shock mount is completely busted. I'm not really sure how this could happen, but you think we're not reusing that, so. There you go. Oh. Oh, wait. There's some more. Okay. Yeah, that whole shock mount is completely busted. set down on the wheels we're going to take those two bolts out and then just lift the car off and the rear end will stay did you forget anything there's like two wires on that thing yeah it's not very much Dude, this would be this would make a sick ass uh what are, what are those things called the segways or whatever oh, all right so here it is we have them side by side this is the lincoln continental rear subframe and here's the s550 mustang subframe so as you can see there's a lot of similarities the suspension architecture design is very very similar um, it's almost identical actually and the subframes are about the same too these rear points should line up exactly with the Mustang ones. The only difference is these front subframe mounts. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of fab work, but this, this is what enables us to do a bolt-on rear wheel drive conversion on the Continental. They're both made in the same assembly plant, so it makes sense that a lot of this is common. So yeah, all the shock mounts look similar. Right, you can see the shock mounts on the body like that same on the mustang the track i can't tell i think it's, it's very similar. similar actually someone's already done this so like we said this is the 
the Continental, the MKZ, and the Fusion are all on the same platform. So Matt Sopa actually did a build with a Coyote 5 liter and a IRS from S550 and a newer Fusion. Um, and he had to do something similar. His rears lined up directly and then he had to modify the fronts to fit in. So we know it's gonna work. We're gonna put it in there and see what it looks like. this up just to give us a little bit more room to look at uh, it looks like we're gonna have to cut this cross member just so that it clears this front area um, so we're gonna try and lift this up or lower the car down and mark where we have to cut and then we're also gonna have to remove this uh, evap canister so we're gonna have to deal with the check engine light but it's So we hammered the body here to make enough clearance for the subframe. So we sh think we should be good for that. Now we're moving on to the, sun to the front mounts, which is what uh, needs a little bit of modification to fit onto the body, so. Yeah, so I mean, originally we were trying to think of how to do this by saving these, but I don't think we're gonna do that anymore. What we're gonna do is cut the weld off the original tube. And then this basically, the, the spots on the Continental end up in the center here. So we're just gonna shift this to back, notch the, the rail where it should fit, and then drop basically the two back in and weld it yeah. back in. So, so we're essentially gonna shorten this yep. by however much we need. So we transferred up the bolt holes to the Mustang subframe. So this is where they line up. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the diameter of this pipe into here, and then weld those onto here. And this Mustang subframe, should bolt in. You saw earlier we cut off the mounts, oh, the lights on the other side, but now we have it so that it's uh, bolted to the body and then we tacked it to the subframe so now this side is where it needs to be we, we, pinion. yeah the pinion is, angle is set to what it needs to be and now we're just fixing up the other side we have to tack the other mount which is here so we're gonna bolt it up to the body now and uh, tack it in a couple places and then we should be ready to fully weld it we've decided we're gonna switch these with polyurethane because uh well, this one's all messed up, so. But after that, we should be able to drop this down and have a rear wheel drive. Well, technically, this is all wheel drive now, but.
so there we have it. We got the Mustang IRS under our Lincoln Continental. Everything's finished up. We had to move those front mounts back a little so the bolt holes would line up. And then we had to notch out a cross member in the body so it would fit up tight but everything fits really well. The pinion angle looks good. If you notice, we had to switch out the stock Lincoln wheels because the bolt pattern's different. So we just robbed my Lincoln Mark 8 wheels on here. Um, and the fitment's pretty good. This is like an 05 offset. So this width and offset fits pretty well. We have something really cool planned for the wheel. So this is just allows us to move it around, but it doesn't fit bad. So it looks pretty good too. So after 10 months, we finally get to show you guys the car that that unique engine gets to go into. So drop a comment below and let us know what you think. We're excited to take you guys along on the next chapter of this channel, and we're gonna do our best to make it the sickest Lincoln Continental there is out there. So if you don't wanna miss that, subscribe. And remember, if you can't buy a V10 Continental, build it. Hello, is this John? Yes, sir. Hi, John. This is Jack uh, with those... Uh, yes, sir. Your, your, your cans are done. They're, they're putting the finished crowd on them as we speak. Oh, uh, really? I'm going to try to have them out today. At the worst, they'll go out Monday. But they're working on them right now as we speak. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great, great. Then I'll wait for your call. Okay, thanks, sir. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.